Hello, friends and neighbors. I'm going to kick off this month with a grammar video. As you may or may not be aware, last month I did two uh, very specific, very detailed grammar videos on how to syntax. Syntax simple or basic and then syntax complex. In this one, I'm going to show you one way to translate a plain English fiction babble thought or sentence into a correct sentence structure. Now, I do have to mention this real quick, all right? If you email me and it's your volition to contact me to apply for a grammar workshop or you request a consultation for whatever reason it may be, and I write you back and I offer you, I say, would you like me to schedule you a consultation? And then you write back and you don't address that offer. And then I write back again and I offer it again two or three times and you, you don't, you just ignore what I'm saying to you and then continue to email me. I'm not going to respond back to you anymore. You're going to go in the junk bin. That's just, please, if you're going to correspond with me, if you're going to offer Kuliana, read the email very carefully, especially the plain English section, which would be in brackets and italics. And it's a different color font. Read it very carefully and then give your answers yay or nay to that. But I'm not, I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you if you won't answer one simple question. All right. Now that that's out of the way, a lot of people have trouble uh, translating their plain English fiction babble thoughts into a correct sentence structure, especially at the beginning or even at a, at a so-called advanced state. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to address that. I'm going to do it as briefly, as succinctly, efficiently, and as clearly as possible. So you see the sentence here on your screen. The sun emits great heat near noon daily. How would you translate that into a correct sentence structure communication? All you experts, all you people out there who think you know what it is you're doing with this grammar, how would you do it? Could you do it like that, right here, right now, on the spot, in the now space, and do it with correctness? Well, I guess I'll never know but I just wanted to give a few of you, the serious students, a sense of what it takes to perform with this stuff and have closure on the grammar. So here we go, step by step. The first step is to look at the sentence and give your perception of what the main idea is in the sentence. What is the main idea? The sun emits great heat near noon daily. Now we have some data in here, some raw data. We have a sun, S-U-N, tangible contract word. I think we can all certify what that is on a basic level. It's that bright ball in the sky. All right. Emits great heat. So that's an idea of sensation. You feel the heat. Okay. That's data coming into your port of sensation. Uh, the heat's coming from the sun because you can certify that by moving into shade where something is blocking the sun. You don't feel the heat anymore. So, I mean, that's a, a common sense logical deduction there. Near noon daily. So near noon. Now we're giving a, a location in the now space, a location in a continuum, noon. All right, 1,200 hours, daily. Now we can guess, you know, even though daily is non-tangible contract, it's just day with the poison suffix ly added onto it, deadening the tangibility of the word, we still get a sense of that it's a continuous everyday thing. All right, now, while this may be true, like the sun as far as I know, would remain about the same temp on an everyday basis, okay? But whether that heat reaches us every day, 
you know, sometimes it's cloudy, it's not as hot. The temperature rises and falls, right? So that's not an entirely correct statement right off the bat. But what is the main idea of it? The sun emits great heat near noon daily. What is, the, what is it a claim of? And one thing I teach all of my students is, especially when you're a beginner, it's a good idea to get in the habit of starting your correct sentence structure with these basic mechanics. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim. To start it with that basis, because you start off with the cause, you've put it in your jurisdiction, your jurisdiction, the claimant's knowledge, it's your knowledge, the claimant, and what's the knowledge concerned with? The facts. All right, we're talking about facts here. We've established our geometric level playing field uh, line of communication. It's a geometric straight line for the claimant's knowledge of facts, those two points with which to draw that straight line. Now we can drop our verb of the thinking and our movement, moving the cause and the concern into the possessive. And the possessive is with the claim. Now we need to put what it is a claim of. And that harkens back to the question I asked you a little bit ago. What is the main idea of the sentence? So we have a tangible contract, fact-based word, sun, and that it emits great heat. So if it emits great heat, then that's a sensation claim, right? So it's a claim of sensation, or it could be a claim of witness. So I would say of the witness, because we're witnessing something, right? We're testifying to something that the sun emits great heat. So for the claim of knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the witness with the sun of the heat Now, what about the near noon daily? Let's just get rid of this daily thing because that cannot be uh, a consistent fact across the board as far as our sensation goes. Because, as I said, you know, temperature rises and falls on a daily basis, so we'd leave that out. So we would just make it a claim for the now space right now at noon right now. So how would we convey that? Well, let's work it out. With the sun of the heat, with the location of the noon, and it is a location, so we put the tilde. And again, it's another location, so I would put Eastern Standard. And then I would put time in brackets for clarity. So we have for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the witness, with the sun of the heat, with the location of the noon, 12 o'clock and hour, showing that 12, 1, 2, 0, 0 is an hour, right? It's the 1200th hour. Eastern Standard. And that's a, a time zone. So another interesting thing I'll just tell you right now. You see, I don't put the colon in there uh, because I found if you're using a 24-hour clock, which I like to do, because then you don't have to deal with PM or AM, right? You don't have to deal with any mess like that. But if you use a 24-hour clock with colons in it, that implies a military clock. So I don't do that because I'm with the avoidance of any and all military contracts. So I just use one, two, zero, zero. And also, a lot of people, and this is just a, a side note, I guess, uh, an addendum. A lot of people will use this colon as an example of how 
colon's work in correct sentence structure. While in a theoretical sense, much like the David Wynn Miller example, the incorrect but uh, knowledge cultivating example of for the bridge is over the water, for the water is under the bridge. As far as correct sentence structure goes, those examples are wrong. For the bridge is over the water. If you read that backwards, it wouldn't say for the water is under the bridge. If you read for the bridge is over the water backwards, it would be under the water is by the bridge, which makes absolutely no sense. And besides, over and under are not correct sentence structure positionals. There are only four correct sentence structure positionals, as you see here, four of, with, and by. All right. Anyways, it's sort of like that. It, it gives a point. It's a teaching tool but it's not necessarily mechanically sound or correct. And it's just like using this example in a clock uh, to put a, a colon in between the one, two, colon, zero, zero. There's no closure to the, what that means, all right? If you were to do this and put a space there, now it means, uh, and, then, and then have this 12 positioned, it would be of the new, it would be of the 12, with the zero zero is how that would read because the 12 would because there's a comma here and commas group facts and correct sentence structure would already be positioned by of the it would be of the 12 right and then we have with the zero zero that's how you would do that if you want to do that but i don't choose to do that i choose to just do that i simplify everything as far as i can i distill it down and that's what i've done here to avoid any confusion if I possibly can. Anyways, to move on. So we have for the claim of knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the witness with the sun of the heat with the location of the noon, 12 o'clock and hour Eastern Standard. All right. Oops. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the witness, with the sun of the heat, with the location of the noon, 12 o'clock an hour, Eastern Standard, with the sensation by the witness and claimant, Jason Ivy Matthew Colin Glass. Now you notice I underline compound facts. These are compound facts that have a hyphen in between them see eastern hyphen standard claimants hyphen knowledge this however is something different jason hyphen matthew is indeed a compound fact the underline or bottom line in correct sentence structure is used to show that whatever is being underlined as you see my name is underlined there is to be taken as a whole so if you were to syntax this last part it would be five six seven zero the forward slash represents the conjunction and, so that's zero. Claimant would be a seven. Comma, commas group together sevens, facts. And then Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass is underlined because that's to be taken as a whole. And that is also a seven. By doing that, you completely take this colon out of play as far as positional sequencing goes. So this is a correct sentence structure now. This colon in my name does not interfere with the mathematical interface. So if I'm using a platform that does not provide underlining as a mechanic and I can't underline anything, then I would write my name like this. I would put the colon space glass in brackets so that it doesn't that colon does not interfere with the positional sequencing hope that made sense but I do have other videos explaining that all right so now let's check it so here's our correct sentence structure grafted as colon David Eiffel when colon Miller would say so we have four of verb 
with, of, with, of, with, of, with, by. Now we know it's correct. Cause, concern, verb, cogitation, possessive concern, possessive concern, possessive concern, possessive authority. So backwards, because you must always check it backwards to make sure, number one, it makes sense, and number two, it's mathematically certified. Backwards, it would be for the witness and claimant, comma, Jason Knife and Matthew Colon Glass, of the sensation is with the noon, 12 o'clock an hour, Eastern Standard, of the location with the heat of the sun, with the witness of the claim, because it's a witness claim, with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. I've maintained jurisdiction over the whole thing from authority to the cause. Right? So going backwards, the cause is me, the witness and claimant. All right? And what's the cause concerned with? It's concerned with a sensation, my first-hand knowledge, my port of sensation. Then we put the verb of the thinking in because whether you're going forwards or backwards, the verb always comes after two position lodial fact phrases. It always comes after the cause and the concern for the facts of the facts. Then you put your verb in. So in this case, witness and claimant is singular. The verb would be is, is. Now we go into the possessive. With the noon, 12 o'clock an hour, Eastern Standard. So that is possessing the sensation. What is that possession concerned with? It's concerned with a location. Because noon, 12 o'clock hour, Eastern Standard is a location. And what's possessing that location? The heat. With the heat. What's the heat concerned with? Of the sun. All right. What's possessing the sun? The concept of the sun it's with the witness. The witness is possessing the son and concerned with the claim because it is a witness claim. What's possessing the claim? The facts, because we're making claims of facts. And what is the ultimate authority of those facts that are being conveyed? The claimant's knowledge. And as you see down here, I have been credentialed as the claimant. Right? And it is a claim. There's the word claim. It's a witness claim. All right? Forwards, the cause would be claimant's knowledge. What's the claimant's knowledge concerned with? The facts. There we have our two position lodial fact phrases, our cause, concern. We put our verb of the thinking in, which would be is singular, because claimant's knowledge is singular. The plurality or singularity of a verb is entirely contingent upon the cause, the fact in the cause portion of the sentence. Has nothing to do with this. And that's just basic English. What's possessing the facts? It's a claim with the claim. And what's the claim concerned with? Witness. It's a witness claim of the witness. What's possessing the witness? The sun. All right. And what is the sun? It's a witnessing of the sun. The sun is possessing the witness and concerned with the heat. It's concerned with heat. And what is possessing the heat? Well, we're going to give a location. And what is the location concerned with? And there's your location. Noon, 12 o'clock hour, Eastern Standard. And what is possessing that location? The sensation. We are sensing this, right? And who is the ultimate authority of this sensation? This first-hand knowledge that is being conveyed? The witness and claimant. Me. The claimant. So there you have it. Your complete, simple guide to translating a fiction babble thought or sentence into a correct sentence structure. I've taken through you through all the steps, shared a lot of the grammar mechanics, although I'm sure there's some that I missed in there as far as, you know, comprehensive being a complete, completely comprehensive uh, representation of all the mechanics included in it. But again, friends and neighbors, I have a correct sentence structure playlist with I think 50 or 60 videos or more on there giving closure to all the mechanics and you're more than welcome to study that or if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen i will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me you can ask me whatever you like and i'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to if you'd like to support the channel click on the join button underneath this video there are two tiers of membership 
Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.